for so long. We've been here. Hello and good evening to another wonderful Springboard Hangout. The Springboard Hangout is our weekly, th weekly um, program where we hang out with people who are making it. And most importantly, we have some fun and we have some ed ed education and we generally enjoy each other's company. This week, we are continuing our five part series on women on the go, which looks at the 360 women and what they're bringing to our lives. Last time when we had Rosie in the studio, she talked about strategy, she talked about having a clear vision, and she said people with the right skills are needed to bring the vision to bear. And therefore, we went searching and searched and searched, looked under some nooks and crannies, and then all of a sudden, here we have two wonderful, wonderful ladies. We have to my immediate right, we have Abigail Welbeck, who is the Director of um, Counseling Services at um, Ashesi, Career Counseling Services at Ashesi University. And then we have Shikako Goka, who is an etiquette expert. So we've got the vision, we've got the people. How do we unearth their potential to ensure that? They are well able to bring out the best in the workplace and even in their individual lives. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to today's Springboard Hangout. My name is Comfort Okra. So, if we're talking about Abigail, Abigail, Director of Career Services as, and career, um, as a career and professional development coach. Hmm, coach. Oh, okay, so I'm thinking about somebody, you know, you know, when they are playing football, and I mean, like, if you are in um, my you, for instance, like, uh, you know, you have maybe some um, um, soldier saying that, hello, move here, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So that's a coach. That's a coach. Okay, okay. And Abigail has had about 10 years at a Chelsea University helping, and now she's the director. When you look at her, she's so young. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see that she's so young? Uh, can you see? I, I mean, that's that's Abigail. So she's also um, she 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 her role at at Chelsea has ensured a ninety say ninety percent placement after school in various job place. I mean, job areas. So that means that she's really on top of her game. When we come to Shika who is, um, has had a fantastic experience in the banking, but right now is um, working her craft in the etiquette business. Yes. She <laughs> helps in what Alves said, bring about sustainability in human <laughs> lives. <laughs> so therefore, let's go right into it and let's not, let's not talk plenty. Um, Abigail, yes. please help me. Tell me a little bit about your journey. And what brought you into career development? Were you all of that? Did you always know you'd be a career counselor? No. No. Okay. So tell us a bit about that journey. Okay. Um, I started with um, in the course of science, right? I started studying science because I quite remember that my parents were really keen on getting me onto a medical doctor route. Okay. Route. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so. I went, I studied um, science in Holy Child, and then I went to University of Ghana, and I started out with biological sciences, because obviously that's the route you, you take if you want to go into medicine. But I, I knew in my, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I did know that I didn't want to go and do medicine. Mm -hmm. But I had to really um, understand how to make that argument, um, well. and put it across to my parents, and let them understand that I actually knew what I was talking about. So there was a point that happened, and then after I did one year of biological sciences in Lagon, and then I switched to the humanities. So I finished with a, uh, sorry, um, a bachelor's in psychology and information studies. Even all that time, I, just, I still didn't have any particular career guidance. I'm telling you, I stumbled into career development, which is actually the, when I did my MBTI, that was the role, or that was the um, occupation that aligned very well with the kind of person that I was. So I knew I loved psychology, and so um, I went in to do a master's in occupational and organizational psychology, and it, it took me to career development, and I absolutely loved it, and I've been working at Ashesi for, like you said, 10 years now. I work with a team of amazing career advisors, and it's been great being able to 
impact students' lives and journeys and see how it actually, you know, uh, pans out over the years. I've, it's been amazing. I, I can see I can mm -hmm. see you as one graduation here. Yes, as, yes. This is the last I think it's the last physical graduation we had before COVID came. Okay. Yes. I see. Okay, so then um, I had MBTI, so we'll, we'll look at that later. When when we go, Shika, what about you? I, she she okay, she stumbled yeah. and got into where she she's just blossoming. Mm -hmm. Did you also do the same way, or yours was a straight path, and you knew exactly what you wanted to do, and therefore you just went for it? Definitely not a straight path. I think um, very much like Abigail. Well, I went to university and I studied um, business studies, but um, I came out of um, you know with a degree, but I wasn't really sure what direction to go into. I applied for you know various different jobs, and then I got two job offers. One that was actually paying considerably more, but for some reason I was um, gravitating towards the banking industry because I felt like I could learn a lot more, and you know there'd be real career progression if I was good in mm -hmm. that setting. And I think it was one of the best things that I did because okay. it really underscored uh, where I am today. Okay. In the banking environment, as you know, it's a very disciplined environment. Um, you know, you don't really get. Um, much room to make up the rules. You're governed by very strict codes of conduct and very much like etiquette, you know, it's about the do's and don'ts um, in that environment. If you okay. if you fall out of um, the rules, you mm -hmm. know, you could be prosecuted, you, you know, you could be fined under the Financial Services Act. Um, etiquette is about social do's and don'ts, you know, how you relate to people. And I think that that allowed me to really grow as a person and I soon rose up in the ranks. I came in as a teller. I, you know, I could have had an attitude that, you know, I've got a degree, why am I coming at, in at entry level? But I really wanted to understudy all of the different departments. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me naturally to progress as a manager and, you know, even in my leadership journey. And then I've worked in hospitality as well. So I'm always customer facing, I'm always dealing with people. And one thing that I learned throughout both of these disciplines is that, you know, um, people buy into people. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you find yourself or, you know, the errors you make, even coming up, developing yourself. People uh, find that when you relate to them in a very respectful full manner and that you are polite mm -hmm. and you are sincere about what you're, you're doing, um, it opens many doors. And I think I've always admired people who are just um, naturally seen as, you know, nice and understanding and caring. And uh, that fascination with just people who are generally admired for, for who they are, that led me down this track that, you know, we could do more. Um, we'll always be governed by our organizations, you know, our HR policies, etc. But at some point, you have to separate yourself and say, who am I? What can I do differently? How can I add value? And how can I really show people my true personality? And how can I be a general all round team player? And that's what really attracted me to this world of etiquette that I absolutely love. It's opened many doors. It's allowed me to meet different people. And I work with, you know, the young people. Mm -hmm. I work with adults. I work with professionals because one thing that all of those people, all of my clients have in common is that they assume, just like I do, that there's always something to learn. There's you know, always so something to learn. Always something to learn. Okay, so then based on um, she, she doing her, 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 her parts, telling us about her journey, she talked a bit about the personality, she talked a bit about um, um, understanding yourself. And I know that is what you do to help um, your, 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 your clients or, or, and today all of us are your clients <laughs> all of us, all of us listening online and, and, and on via Zoom or via Facebook, Absolutely. we are all your clients, so therefore if we, we trying to discover ourselves, we trying to find out who we are um, how do we do it? Is it easy? Um, um, what I'll say is there are a lot of people in your life that could help you with that conversation. Okay. I'm, I don't think on this side of, on, on this part of our world, we have those conversations enough. Mm -hmm. right, right from the home, right from primary school, right to senior, uh, second, sorry, junior secondary, senior secondary, before you, you get to university, you have to have people who will ask you those con uh, questions. Is what kind of, who do you think you are? What, where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? What value do you want to bring to the table, right? Questions that tease out who you are innately, right? Um, 
um, beyond you know the, the factors that you see around your life every day. So mm. you, you, you grow up in, a, in an environment that, for example, you've seen everybody in your family going into medicine or being medical doctors. And so that's the only thing you know. And so when you're asked, which is, which is a question you're asked a lot, yeah. who do you want to, what do you want to do in the future? We immediately talk about something that's very common to us. Mm -hmm. right? But we, we don't get people ask us questions like, who are you? Asking questions that tease out who is, who is inside of you, mm. right? Because that's where the conversation starts. Once you know who you are, then you are able to connect that with what kind of opportunities you want to pursue that will support the person you are, that will bring you out and make you shine so that you can even add greater value wherever you find yourself in life, right? So that you are not just following trends, you're not following what people think you should do, you're not following what you see your friends doing, but you know yourself and you are guided. Mm. They are guided conversations. And once again, you ask what a coach does. A coach guides and counsels. Councils, right? So these are guided conversations and questions that will open you up to possibilities. Um, help me. I'm, 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 I'm lost here. Please help me find myself. I <laughs> beg, I beg, I beg. Sure. That, uh, because sometimes, does who you are, is a, is a very, is a loaded question. It is, it is. Who, does who you are look at what you like, does it look at what are the things that make you take, or is it just that maybe I like Fufu and Banku? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's no combination like Fufu and Banku, is there? No, no, no. no. But there's probably Fufu and some sauce. Yeah. I mean, what does, what does that who you are who you drill are, down to? Yes, it's absolutely all of the things you said, right? Right from what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how do I react in or behave in certain situations? Right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you you find answers that are perfect in mm -hmm. all of those questions, right? Mm -hmm. You you will understand the areas or the gaps that you have, right? But what that does is you are cognizant now of what you can do and what you need to work on, mm -hmm. right? And so when that also when that when that happens, it gives you the ability to now figure out how to work on these things. Even when you ask a question about what what do you like. Mm -hmm. What you like can even be influenced by other people. Okay. So there has, there has to, you have to have even deeper questions that are probing into why you like what you like. Mm. Okay, you know, so it's more about why I tick. Why you tick, what makes you tick, why it makes you tick. Okay. Because I can say that, oh, I like Fufu and Lai Soup. But maybe I like it because I've grown up eating Fufu and Lai Soup. But if I'm exposed to fried rice and chicken, I would realize, oh, actually, I love that better than mm. But if I mm. don't get exposed to that, if the mm. questions are not asked, if the opportunity to, for exposure and exploration doesn't happen, I, I, I get stuck in before mm -hmm. it you. And, 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 and you live there for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> oh, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself <laughs> And there actually great personality tests that can help you to start those mm. conversations. If you don't have someone who can help you tease those questions out mm -hmm. or those answers out, there are um, personality types like Myers Briggs type indicator. There's a 16 PF. You can go online. There are free versions of these online that you can take to just get it, uh, an initial understanding of yourself, right, and get get some mm. support in that direction. Okay. 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 So um, we'll go for a quick musical break. Where we'll come back, we'll dive a little bit because um, Shika, Shika, Shika is here. And um, she's nodding too. And, and I know she, she did some, some tricks. <laughs> no, Juju, just tricks. So we'll come to, to an ask um, Shika about that. Please don't go anywhere. Let us know where are you joining us from? Because we love, as you know, to hear from you. Tell us where you are joining us from. <laughs> and as we are, we are going along, if you have any questions, please ask us because they are there. <laughs> they are the SBS etiquette. And then we'll, we'll, we have our career coach as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> For so long, we've been here. Welcome back. And I tell you, I mean, that Obra song, it's something that I really love. And Albert has a little trick up his, his sleeve shortly. Um, we, we had the privilege of um, inter interviewing um, some wonderful old gentleman in the guitar music band i'm not going to tell you the name but please wait look on virtual university you see you see him soon 
And when you see it, you would you love the, the, that interview. Anyway, welcome back. And anyway, we're, what, we're, we're talking about, we had just listened to um, um, Abigail tell us about the, the, the tiny little building blocks of, of, of what career counseling and just the, the idea that you must look at yourself to see what you like. And the liking mustn't just be, I like this, but why? And when you're answering that why, it gives you an idea about what makes you up and not just something that people are talking about. So now we are coming to you, um, Jifa, hey, Shika. Shika. <laughs> Shika, um, we talk about etiquette. Yes. And um, I sometimes people just think that etiquette is just saying, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. But you talked to me and you showed me a different angle that I hadn't looked at it before. Could you tell us what the basic, basic little things about etiquette Okay, so, you know, you, you talked about greeting, mm -hmm. um, and that's a fundamental thing that happens initially when you first meet somebody. But, you know, it, you, you even have to go back a few steps okay. um, to even the sort of impression that you give somebody straight away. You know, etiquette is very much about not offending people okay. and about fitting in. And that's not to say that you're not an individual mm -hmm. and you don't have your own style and taste, but it's about what is socially acceptable behavior when you belong to a particular group or society, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm an etiquette coach, but honestly, having grown up in England for most of my life, I wasn't aware of certain things until I came to Ghana. <laughs> and you know, you make a couple of mistakes and people will actually, you know, either be offended by your behavior because that's the thing about tell etiquette. Me, tell me the one that <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you go somewhere and you walk into a room and you think, okay, well, I'm, I've, been, I've been brought up well, I'm very polite, let me greet people. And then you start, left to right, because that's what you do everywhere else. But here, no, you must start right to left, you know. So sometimes you'll see and somebody will just be like, hey, 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 you know. <laughs> and, you know, they just think you're, you're being bad-mannered. But really and truly, you were not taught this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. I'm somebody who I felt has been exposed to a lot. You know, I'm polite, I'm educated. But until you are taught certain things, mm -hmm. you're not going to know about it. And you're not going to know about potentially offending somebody. And that's really why I do what what I do, okay. you know, it's, it's not to be condescending or to teach people, uh, you know, how to, to, to behave a certain way. It's my approach is more about, you know, are you lacking this knowledge? Would you do better knowing how to comport yourself in this social setting, etc. And I find that, you know, people are responding because most of the time people realize that they don't have the, all the answers. Certain things you have to be taught. Most of us are uh, brought up with basic, basic manners. Even as a child, as a baby, you know, you're, you're very proud of yourself when you learn something and you even learn how to say please and thank you. You know, your parents will pat you on the back yeah. and you're very gleeful as well. But with etiquette, as you grow up, you have to expose yourself um, to, to things that you didn't otherwise know, just to allow you to get along better in society. And you know, um, one of the things that Abigail talked about was knowing yourself. You know, mm -hmm. some of it, I believe, falls under it, like emotional intelligence and knowing what makes you tick. But with etiquette as well, it's about knowing what actually repels other people against you as well mm -hmm. and know how to handle yourself in social situations okay. and even in your corporate environment, you okay. know, how to speak to people. Okay. And etiquette, you know, it really comes down to even how you send your emails, general correspondence, even your, your WhatsApps, how you address people. These are all the things that you have to pay attention to when you are developing your career because, you know, we buy into people at the end of the day. And yes, you may have the, the best results. You may, you know, get a first in your degree, but what kind of employee are you going to be? What kind of a leader are you going to be? You know, how are you going to relate to other people? Are you going to offend them? Are you going to be the sort of person that pushes people? Are you going to be the sort of person that helps others to develop their careers? Are you going to have an open door policy or are you going to be a dictator? And, you know, so th these are the things that, you know, with um, learning about etiquette principles, you're able um, to help other people, give them, boost their confidence as well, and even develop yourself as an individual. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so, so um, Abigail, here we are, we are looking, we've, we've looked at some, an, an individual who has put in place or is, a, is now putting in place the things that would help him or her um, be more socially cohesive. And as, as Albert said, be, uh, to bring about sustainability in the workplace. Um, but the person doesn't yet know that this particular workspace will suit me or that particular workspace will suit me. So then would you recommend or would you... Would you what, what
able to 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 um, um, be able to fit in, or I'll be able to be someone, a team player, or whatever uh, the person seeks to do. Yes, the um, the key word here is exploration. Okay. Yes. The key word. The key word. Guys, the key word <laughs> is exploration. Okay. So I mentioned, or I talked about knowing yourself. The next step to that is, once you know yourself, you will be guided to understand what kind of careers that you can pursue, or people. Okay with your personality type could pursue. Okay. What you need to do with that information is, or, or even if you just have a couple of careers you, you're thinking about, you need to explore. You need to explore, find opportunities to work in those fields. Find opportunities to shadow someone or a professional within that capacity. Find opportunities to even hold informational interviews where you are talking to somebody in your, in your field of interest and learning from their journey and asking them questions about what you can do even at the level you are at to get to where they are at, right? So these are all exploratory opportunities that gets you to test the waters because you can think you will love a particular occupation or career you would get into it and realize this is definitely not for me right and so don't wait to get fully immersed into it and realize you've made a mistake find opportunities very early on in your career to explore and test the waters and find out and figure out what works for you, what doesn't. And don't just go into it and say, oh, this doesn't work for me. Make sure you are open-minded, right? And you are taking advantage of every opportunity that presents itself. You never know, you may go into one particular career or explore, exploratory opportunity. It may not be the one you want, but you may, you, I, I call it acting like a sponge, right? Mm -hmm. Soaking up as much information and skills and experiences that you can, building networks along the way. Yeah. Because you never know how, where that opportunity could even take you to. So don't, and this one thing that a lot of our youth don't really appreciate is they feel like, oh, I'm my own self, I can go and do, and I think that's where the etiquette also comes in play, is how do you look at an opportunity and take the most out of it, even if that's not the path you want to pursue, right? So making sure you are building great networks, treating people the right way. If somebody sends you to go and buy, of course it shouldn't happen, mm -hmm. but what attitude are you, you know, doing that with? You know, how are people viewing you? So that somebody can say, oh, I know this person, I want to give this opportunity to, okay. right? So these are all opportunities to explore, and the attitude is a key part of that exploration, is with what attitude are you approaching the exploratory journey with? Mm. So at the tail end of that, you begin to tease out where you want to go and make um, a more um, de um, um, informed decision about mm -hmm. where you want to go with your career. Explore, please make sure you get opportunities to explore. Explore, but you know, it's easier said than done, no? because if you are looking at the, the, the bread and butter and you don't have that bread and butter, it's not that easy to explore. Um, would you say then, when we are in school, that's the best one of the best times that we can use those vacations to explore? I would say so. I would say make the most out of your journey when you're young. Okay. You have less responsibilities mm -hmm. and more opportunities for you to make decisions mm -hmm. that are um, uh, very um, wild decisions, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's still not too late when you're older. Okay. You can still keep your bread and butter job or situation running. There's even no um, age for an internship. You can find a way to get into an opportunity um, to intern to shadow someone, to ask questions, asking questions, being curious, asking questions, right? Um, volunteer for something over the weekend. You know, find an opportunity to get inserted into the field. Network is also very important. What kind of networks do you have to support where you want to go? How are you building and maintaining those networks, right? So it's never too late. Never say never. It's never too late. It's never too late. So I think... Um, <laughs> Chica, so in this case, what would you, what would you, what would you, how, look at me, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I think I'm 15 years, I'm not very sure now, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into the etiquette field, Yes. and um, one of the things I had, I don't know how far it's true, that um, helped me, is the fact that when you are in the etiquette field, you, I mean, or, or, Part of the etiquette in the, in the workplace is that when you when you get in at the um, as as a young person when your boss is coming and you carry the bags and take it in, is, is that is that is that? So that's 
this is exactly why etiquette is um, so interesting because it's all about what is cu culturally acceptable for that particular environment. Okay. If that's what everybody else does in this particular organization that you're in, naturally, if you don't do that, then you're going to be seen as the odd one out or maybe the one that's not as polite and helpful. This can also be tricky when you're coming from a completely different environment where you, you call your bosses by their first name, just like I did. But here, you know, maybe you call them Madame or Sir, if not even their full name, Mr. or Mrs. So, you know, you, you really have to pay attention uh, wherever you find yourself. And I think, you know, what she said, you know, wherever you find yourself, ask the questions and watch what other people do. Don't be shy, because if you don't, and you just sort of make assumptions, that's where you find yourself um, offending other people. You know, So it, it, it's really, really important to apply whatever the cultural norm is for that particular organization, or club, or group, or society. Yeah. Would you call that having the emotional intelligence? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, with, I mean, with, 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 I, 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 I yes. just saw um, with, with, with a very nice setup yeah. um, showing people how to have a fine dining experience. Yes. Oh, so it's fine dining experience <laughs> is part of, of Absolutely. Of, what are some of the things that people do that are not good at the dining table? Um, you know, okay. most of the things that we do here when we're young and our parents are always telling us, you know, keep your elbows off the table, you know, don't speak with your mouth full. But the thing is, people still do this and they don't really pay attention that nobody really wants to see what you're about to digest. And, you know, um, also bad manners, especially when we're sharing food as well. People, you know, if you're in a group setting and you're passing food around, especially like in a Chinese style uh, uh, mm -hmm. what they call family service, mm -hmm. rice bowls and different things being passed around. Some people will heat their plates without thinking about, you know, whether or not there's enough to make it round for everybody. And, you know, even there's even a, a correct way to pass food around, you know, which is an in particular order, of course. I'll reveal all, the, all of these things if you were to attend one of my fine dining experiences. <laughs> but, you know, you'll be surprised at how much there is to learn about something simple like sitting down and having a meal. But honestly, you know, one shouldn't take this for granted. Many a business deals are brokered uh, over a dinner over a meal and most of the time you know maybe your your next employer or the person who's going to land your next contract is really taking you out because they want to get a sense of who you are as a person how do you speak to waiters you know just because the the dinner is being bought for you are you going to order everything off the menu you know are you going to drink more than the person that invited you are you even going to take the best seat in the house and neglect that somebody is actually hosting you so there's so many things to take notice of and these are the things that people are are looking out to make a judgment about you. So, you know, um, it's not something to be, you know, laughed at or to be mm -hmm. taken slightly. These are things that can actually help develop you in a very real social sense. And even networking, when you go out and your job is to meet people, to build alliances and relationships, some people find it very hard to do. So, you know, I can, I can teach you how to do that, walk in a place with confidence and make an introduction and strike up a conversation and tell people what you, you're capable of doing and the value you're able to add to either their business or life. All of these things are about etiquette. But naturally, if you come off and you give people the wrong impression, nobody's going to want to deal with you. Right. I have um, hel uh, Martha. Martha Kon says a hello, comfort. Hi, how are you? Good to see you today. And then I also have um, on from, from YouTube, I have Frederick Welbeck. Who do you think Frederick <laughs> Welbeck is? <laughs> and he's saying that he's got a front. Of course, you have to have the front seat because we otherwise, when we come home today, Wahala. Okay. Then we have Selassie Nupe. He says, I'm not missing this for anything. Excited <laughs> about this. And then uh, Lefania Gibbs says that next to you, um, um, well, uh, Frederick. And um, so they, 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 they are exchanging high fives there. Thank you. And um, Sika <laughs> and um, um, Abigail, this is uh, from Tusi or tu Tuchi. Tuchi. Okay, <laughs> Tuchi. Saying that loving this conversation. Um, so you can see you've got people all excited about what you, what, what you, what you are sharing <laughs> today because they are really enjoying themselves. Um, as, we, as we go on, um, you, 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 you mentioned something earlier in your submission when you talked about the fact that as people do those internships and they discover um, areas about, about themselves, 
and what are potential things that they can they can delve into and potential things that get me out of here <laughs> and they scream their, their their heads out um they are then more able to 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 give mm -hmm. of themselves mm -hmm. so then you have discovered that um this thing is for me or this thing is not for me just like how 100 years ago, I knew that if they put me in the medical field, uh, there's going to be disaster. So I never, ever went anywhere close to them. Do you get me? So you've discovered where your niche is. You've discovered what, you, what really makes you tick. How do you then develop yourself in that space? Okay. So once you identify where you want to be at, you need to identify the skill sets that are required to shine in that particular area. And then you go on to develop those skill sets. Okay. So first you discover yourself mm -hmm. and then you find what skill sets are needed. Exactly. And then you develop. I beg you, please do a little bit of the skill set needed and then a little bit of the what you need to, I mean, how you... Okay. So if you want to go into an occupation that deals a lot with people, um, she, as Shika just mentioned about what she does, and she's a lot of, lot of people-facing mm -hmm. work, right? Mm -hmm. You need to look at um, how you're communicating, how you're treating people. You know, you're smiling right now. You know, are you that person who can smile at people? Are you um, very understanding? Because you're going to be, dealing with people is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you have to have the heart to do that, right? And understand, for example, things like um, things are not always what they seem on the face level. Being able to dig deeper and so provide people with support and guidance, those kind of skill sets, right? If you understand first of all what they are, then you are, you look at how do I build that? What what opportunities can I take advantage of to begin to build? First of all, b the building is experiential one, but also it's and what institutions can also support you to learn. Mm. The home can support you to learn some of these um, um, skills, and then there's your school should also be able to support that. Then you go into experiential learning where you put it into practice. Once you put it into practice, you begin to see gaps here and there, begin to fill those gaps. Then you become very proficient in those skills sets. That's why employers always want people who've worked in industry before. It's not just about gaining the qualifications. Anybody can do that. But have you had some working experience? Have you tested what if it is like in the workspace? And how, did, how you talk to people, how you um, communicate, whether up or down, how do you, um, you know, how, you, how do you work well in a team? What are your leadership capabilities or potential leadership capabilities, etc. right? And so all of these things you begin to harness when you put it into practice and you learn by doing. That's experiential learning, right? So these are the things to harness those skills before you dive deep into the field that you want to go into. Then you are ready. You have the technical skills. Then you have the soft skills. You have the experience. You have the networks. You are set. Doesn't mean you won't make mistakes, but at least they are not very... They're not terrible mistakes. You know, you can learn from that and, and move on, right? Excellent, excellent. The conversation is so interesting. Very, so, so, so before, okay, before we go to, uh, uh, guys, stop worrying me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, uh, the, there's, there's, okay. Shika, there, there's this thing where you have, Learned on this, and, and uh, you've you've learned the skills. You've learned the technical. You've you've also seen how you you you, you can harness your 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 social networks. You've built very good networks, and you are, you are going on in the field. Mm -hmm. And then people now see you as an authority yes. to refer to. However, one day somehow you make a misjudgment. How do you handle misjudgments? Is there any etiquette concerning how to handle mistakes? Yeah, and I would say... And, know, and, and give me one <laughs> practical example. I mean, look, it, it's all about being sincere 
and authentic. We're human beings and we will always make mistakes, you know, but I think owning up to your mistakes mm -hmm. is uh, one of the best ways to ende endear people to you. You know, okay. sometimes things can start up and it's a, it's a disaster. And I mean, even in my early career in banking, you know, I made some mistakes. Um, I lost money. Um, you know, in an ATM machine. And um, I was quite young at the time, maybe like 20,000 pounds, and that was a lot back in the day. We're talking, <laughs> you know, 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, I could have um, just tried to, to hide it or something. I mean, eventually it would have come out because this is a bank. At the end of the day, there are checks and balances, you know, but I, I could have bought myself some time. But, you know, immediately I owned up to it and I asked for help. And it really taught me something about retracing my steps and actually, um, you know, discovering, um, you know, how to look for, for missing things, money and balancing. And in the end, we found the missing money in the ATM all right, but it just wasn't keyed in properly. Okay. And this really helped because, you know, um, I didn't want anybody, you know, to think that I was, you know, the new young <laughs> black girl who was stealing <laughs> money. But what it is, is that even in my search for help, you know, turning to people, you, you know, they got to know me and, and my story and the challenges. And I ended up having a lot of support. Okay. And um, so I had people to turn to throughout my development in, in that role, all the way up to, to managerial level. Wow. And, and, you know, it was something that people really appreciated. Now, I could have, you know, sort of hidden it or, or whatever, or even blamed somebody else for that error. And I think when you have integrity and you're sincere, um, people will always, um, you know, have compassion for you and mm. empathy as well. And then you should also have the same for others as you're developing as well and not have this arrogant sort of behavior about you just because now you've risen up in the ranks. You have to also support other people as they are coming up, you know. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. So then, um, unfortunately, okay, so far. We will now go for the game changer and uh, we'll have the game changer by Jojo Cran. Jojo today is talking about an interesting topic. Let's listen to Jojo. Today's game changer is for the creators. And make no mistake, you are a creator. Whether you blog, podcast, make music, make YouTube videos or anything else, you count. But creating content isn't easy on the best of days and doing it consistently is even harder. So today's game changer is simply a reminder to keep going and keep creating. Why? Let's ask Mariah Carey. Mariah recorded the album Merry Christmas in 1994. And while the album wasn't a world beater, one song on it stood the test of time. Yep, I'm talking about All I Want For Christmas Is You. Mariah wrote the holiday bop in just 15 minutes and initially she didn't think much of it, but the world had other ideas. This week, our game changer is Dividend. Despite being written over two decades ago, All I Want For Christmas pays Mariah Carey till this day. By 2000, its highest chart position was 84th, but due to internet streaming, the song has hit new heights in recent years. The song was streamed over 12 million times on Christmas Day in 2020, causing it to finally hit number one on the Billboard charts 25 years after its release. Oh, and by the way, the song has paid Mariah over $60 million in royalties. So here's the point. Keep creating, because you never know which of your creations will finally break through. And don't forget, all it takes is one. You know how our parents always warn us that the internet is forever? That applies to good things too. Your creations can pay dividends for years, whether financially, by creating professional opportunities, or in a million other ways. So stay consistent, keep creating, and wait for the breakthrough. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okren. Have a phenomenal week. Welcome back to the Springboard Hangouts. The Springboard Hangouts, as you know, is your educative program as well as your fun program where we find out things with different people. And today we are hanging out with Shika and Abigail. We are looking at our career and we are looking at our etiquette and we are getting a complete picture before we run away today. So then um, when um, Abigail, sorry, before we went on the break, Shika was talking about the need to own your, 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 your mistakes and talked about uh, um, integrity. And that brought me to, some, to something. Yes, we have discovered the skills. We have discovered, uh, 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 we've, we've, we've honed that particular skill that we, we've got. We've been able to even exper experiment or we've been able to use it and we realize that we are really great at that. 
do we need to have values? And if we do, what kind of values should one look at? So definitely. And in that case, you can add your values <laughs> that, that hold you. <laughs> yes, definitely. Values are very foundational. They are um, a fabric of who we are we are. You definitely have to have values because that will inform how you behave and what you do. Okay. And so, absolutely. I cannot talk about the values for other people, mm -hmm. but like you said, I can tell you what my personal values yeah. are. At the top of the, the chart is my faith and my God. Right? I don't joke with my God. I am a passionate believer and follower of, of Jesus Christ, and I love God, and everything about me is is so that's the center of who I am, and everything else speaks to that. And anybody who knows me, I don't keep quiet about that, right? I, I speak it as much as I can, right? You know what? Okay. I listened to an episode where you talked about your mother praying for you. Oh, my you... YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah. I have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and tell us a little bit about that episode. What happened? <laughs> so I was doing um, a testimony series. Yeah around how we can, we should be intentional about listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and being able to impart into people's lives, whether it's supporting in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. And so I had people who were sharing about times when other people had been instrumental in their mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking about how um, my mom's prayers saved me from an attack, um, a late night attack when I was in university, I think my second year of school. Um, and my, I'd gone out to a, with a friend of mine to this program and we came back. We were coming back around 3 a.m. It was late. And we, the taxi driver took a sudden turn and I just, my antennas were already, already up. Like I was just suspicious of this, this, this driver. And he parks in a very, I think the switchback road, yeah, which is very a very quiet. dark, very quiet. And around 3 a.m. too, there was literally nobody on the road. And he says he has to sort out his light or something goes into the boot. And a, 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 a full grown human being, a man with a machete, actually comes out of the boots, about to attack my friend and I. They actually came and it was bad, and you know, trying to get out of the car, we couldn't, and I managed to get out, and I fell, there's a gutter there, and I injured myself, and I, tried, I was just running and screaming, and you know, what, and what happened, the turn around, what happened with that is, just at, some, at that point, all of a sudden, because these people could have done anything to us, it was late, all of a sudden, they just decided, they just were in a hurry to just get rid of us, enter the taxi and run. There was no police or anybody around. What was chasing them? What did they see? And so later on, after I'd, you know everything, and my mom, I was narrating to my mom later on, I think a day or two after, she was told me that, because she was at a prayer camp at that time. Mm. And she had said that, so the time, the exact time I mentioned the attack was happening, she said she had felt a strong prompting to pray for me. And she had prayed. She didn't understand. Then I think the following morning, my dad calls her and says, this has, this has happened. And she was just thankful, thankful that she actually followed that Holy Spirit intuition Thanks to then. pray. So we're just talking about how prayer is very important. If you can't give money to anybody, you want to help someone, don't think prayer cannot do anything. Prayer works wonders. How can you pray for someone? You'd be surprised what your prayer will do for them. So, thank you. I mean, I, 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 that testimony was a very powerful one. So, what are your other values? <laughs> yes. So, family is next. Family, family. is next. Yes, absolutely. Family. Um, integrity, right? Um, two things that I've learned in my journey that I, I carry along with me is, A, like she said, when you make mistakes, you own up to your mistakes. I've made some terrible mistakes, especially in my career, and I learned from that, right? And I had to be consistent in doing the right thing mm -hmm. for people to see that I had learned from that experience. And then finally, it's about, um, actually, two more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, one is um, people, I mentioned earlier, people, things are not always what they seem. Okay. We are too quick to label people. We are too quick to judge people. We are too quick to, because we have our own set of how we think and how we think things should be. We interpret things our way. Mm -hmm. But in, the situation may not be that way. I may come into a room, and I, I think Mrs. Okran, when I came into the room, she just gave me some, she eyed me. She doesn't like I me. She's, she's rude. Eyes. She's you know, <laughs> But for all you know, if I ask you, you probably were not even thinking about you know you are, your mind was on something else and so before you make don't even make judgment have a conversation to understand right and most of the times you realize that there are deep-seated issues 
that people just need support and help with. That if you can go in and help somebody, right, make the person influence and impact their lives, right, rather than labeling. You realize that even that label you thought you wanted to give to them, they didn't deserve it. They just needed help, right? Mm. That is it. So don't, don't be quick to label. Understand people. Have conversations to understand, right? And then finally is how do you pay it forward? When somebody does something good for you, look for an opportunity to pay it forward. That is how we will create a, a cycle of, of doing good and being kind, being generous and gracious to one another in society. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. And so with that, I will just read this quick one that uh, Lefania gives. Um, Karen from Ch Chado says, Abigail is not just my career coach, but my prayer partner, my sister, my best friend, and my angel. I think career coaching is her ministry, to be honest. Thank you, Karen. So there you, that we, so we, we, we got come to you, um, um, Amshika, please tell us. My, what are your values? Okay. I mean, what, can, what may have you undergathered get at those values, please? I mean, very similar to Abigail family. Family first for me. Um, I don't know, but I don't know anybody else who spends as much time with their family as I do. <laughs> there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not speaking to, you know, either my sister, my brother, or my parents. We are very, very close-knit family. And I think, you know, uh, with that as well, the integrity is at mm -hmm. the forefront of everything that I yeah. do. I cannot, um, you know, be calling myself an etiquette coach and not living out that lifestyle in everything that I do. And with that also naturally goes with the respect that I have for people because it's something that I saw growing up. Like I, um, my dad and my, my, my mother, they're probably the most gentle people that I've ever met. They are, you know, if you saw the word respect or gentle or lady in a textbook, their pictures would literally come out because that's who they are. And you know, that's the very foundation on which I was brought up with. I would go to the hairdressing salon sometimes and my dad would pick me up and all the ladies there, they would really look forward to seeing him because he's going to come in and he's going to look every single one of them in the eye, give them a greeting and ask them how their day was. And they literally called him the gentleman. So you know when you grow up with that kind of character, it, it, it's almost impossible that you would be anything else. And you know, with that as well, then the, the man is the respect. So family, integrity, manners and respect are the things that I generally live by and that's what I want to bring and add value to other people's lives as well because I think that when we have that foundation, we can really harness um, and enjoy our relationships so much more and make other people feel good. You know, everything from just acknowledging your janitors, you know, your gates men, everybody, all those people that serve you behind the scenes that are always there protecting you, you know, let's not forget them. Let's always, you know, remember to check in and say hello, how are you, and get to know their names, you know, and, you know, like she said, pay it forward. Sometimes just surprise them, do something for them that's totally unexpected, you know, but at the heart of it, everybody deserves respect regardless of their social background, you know, their upbringing, and that's what we have to inculcate as a society. That's it. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, Valerie um, Obazi says that authenticity is everything, Shika. So, so, <laughs> so true. Thank you, very, Valerie. Okay, so hmm. sometimes this is a part of the program <laughs> that I hate when I have to end, but our time. It's gone. No. And so, and so um, thank you for, for, for giving us um, so because I have a list of things still that I have to ask them. And, but the people in the studio are saying that we have to close. <laughs> so, so we have to close. So um, thank you so much, Shika. Thank you so much, thank Abigail. You. Do you have any parting words for our people today? Um, I, I would say, I think I'll borrow the words um, the lady put there, be yes. authentic, right? Okay. Okay. Be yourself. Okay. There's so much in society trying to make us, try to, trying to force us to be people we are not, mm -hmm. right? There's social media, there's, there's so many things, right? But try and find what makes you be your true self mm -hmm. and, and follow that, right? Whatever centers you in that direction, I think it's very important to be your true self. And, and don't leave God out of anything that you do. Trust me, Jesus said without him, you can do nothing. So please, don't leave God out. <laughs> Fantastic. Said, yeah. No, no, she can please. You saw what part of <laughs> um, yes, I mean, what can I say that hasn't already been said? Um, yes, yeah, stay true to yourself. 
But, um, you know, I, I really believe in acknowledging people. I really believe in harnessing good relationships. And I think that, you know, um, like you said before, we make judgments very quickly and we make assumptions. But I would always say that regardless of what somebody else is doing, you know, maintain your integrity. Feel good about being good to other people, even if they're not necessarily going to reciprocate what you do. Uh, have the peace of mind, um, knowing that you put your best foot forward and that you did the right thing. And, you know, there's always somebody watching. So you could be inspiring somebody through that journey, that act of compassion and that, um, you know, respect, those manners that you show. So, you know, don't worry about what other people are doing. Stay in your lane and just be the best version of yourself that you can be. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Oh, she got Thank you so much. PM and you would enjoy yourself. Additionally, please remember that on Sunday we'll have um, our show again on ETV. So we'll see you on ETV on Sunday. Please make it a point to watch it. So, Sika, this is from us. Uh, sorry, Abigail. <laughs> this is from us. Thank you so to much. To you, you for really coming grateful. there. And um, Dad, let, me, let me get up for you. And then this is from you to you from us for being with us today. Thank you today very much. Today is our launch of the Core Tales and you would really enjoy it. Yeah, I look forward to reading it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying resilience, that's a really good Yes, point. yes it is, it is. They were, they were fantastic stories. Actually, one today I bought a pair of shoes from one of the gentlemen. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of today's program. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Don't go anywhere because next week promises to be another exciting one. And by the way, as you know, 25th is my birthday. Eh? So 24th, we are having a party here. Please make sure you are here on 24th June. That one. That's me. Thank you and God richly bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. For so long, we've been